going on guys my name is slim and i've been painting on rust since 2016. i've decided to make this video for a number of reasons firstly there are still a lot of doubters who think i use rust angelo or other third party programs to do my paintings so shout out all my doubters by the way second there have been some people asking me on my time lapses and pictures of portraits that i post to give tips about my techniques for shading and realism with this tutorial, I want to challenge more people to try and paint realistically in Rust. If you use anything I teach you in this video for a painting, be sure to link it to me so that I can see it. And today I'm going to be covering every little tip that I've learned over my years of Rust painting and going through my specific process that I do for each portrait. This is the reference image that I'm going to be using for this painting today. I'll leave it in the corner for the entire video so you can watch some progress as it goes along. The portraits that I showed in the beginning of the video usually can take me anywhere from 2 to 6 hours depending on the level of detail in the original image. I tend to lean towards medium to close up portraits of people because that's what I'm most comfortable with and also with the brush sizes currently in the game for the picture frame that I use, any subject way closer or further away makes it a lot more difficult to add proper shading or line work. Also I get this question a lot so I wanted to address it before I start. So which is what do I use to paint these pictures. Obviously, I'm using a mouse right now. Um, so I've been doing digital art since 2014, way before I had a pen tablet or anything. Uh, so I kind of became interchangeable with either a mouse or a tablet once I eventually bought one. I have two Wacom drawing tablets now, but I only use them for art outside of Rust. Now that that's out of the way, let's get to painting. So the first two steps that I always do are the background and the line work. Sometimes if the entire subject of the picture is a different color than the background dramatically, then I'll put down a blob of darker or lighter color in the middle to make my life easier in the long run. I tend to lean towards black and white pictures because with the current palette in the game, not all of the color spectrum is easily achieved. With the black, the white, and the two gray, you can literally reach any shade of gray that you would like to. Speaking of the palette, even though the rust painting palette only has 20 colored circles in it, there are actually colors hidden in between the circles in all of the gray areas. This is a picture that I've had saved on my phone for about 3 years of the accurate rust color palette. On some of my skin color paintings, people usually ask how I'm able to get that color with the rust palette available. I just move my mouse over here between the green and the blue, and if I click correctly, I should be able to select the skin color. If you like the rust palette that I showed you, you can google rust hidden painting palette and a reddit post should pop up as a first result. Now I'm going to begin with the line work. When I start, I try to get the canvas as lined up as straight with my monitor as possible so the dimensions will match the picture. I've been doing art somewhat consistently for about 16 years, so I've been honing my ability to take what I see and transfer it as accurately as possible onto a canvas or paper. To do this in rust, what I usually do is imagine a wireframe version of the reference image. I don't worry about the colors of the painting yet, all I am getting down is a soft line to mark all of the individual areas that I will eventually have to shade in the painting. For this line work, I am using the smallest brush with a lowered opacity and the softest brush shape so that they will be easy to mask or erase later in the painting. I have made dozens of rust paintings before and not all of them turned out as good as the last. Usually I take as much time as possible to make the line art match the reference image before I start shading, or else the rest of the painting would just be set up to fail and not look as good as the reference image or as good as you want it to be. This stage can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour depending on how advanced the reference is, but this particular picture isn't too complicated. I actually chose this one because one of my weakest traits about portraits that I paint is hair, so I wanted to get some practice in while also giving you guys knowledge about painting. Some of the line work and the rest of the painting is going to be sped up with the mouse camera to keep the video under an hour long. Another important tip that many people don't know about in Rust is how to paint straight lines. If you click down anywhere on your canvas, hold shift and then unclick somewhere else on the canvas, a straight line between the two points will be created. This helps tremendously to make the lines look less shakily drawn and more professional in the game so that it matches the reference better. I'm just going to let this play for a little bit more and then I can begin with the blocking out of the colors. Ok, 
Okay, so at this point the lines are looking good. I'm going to move on to blocking in all of the main colors of the painting so that I can start blending them once I'm done with that. Um, so I'm doing this with the second hardest circle brush and then the full opacity. Uh, size obviously changing depending on what I fill in. But I just want to have a pretty hard brush because I'm just getting in these colors. By the time you're done with this stage, it should look like some kind of modern art piece that was sold for way too much. Because it's just really basic except all the features are looking realistic. Um, some of the parts of the picture may look goofy when you're at this stage or like just finishing the stage. For example, her teeth end up looking like huge prominent bug teeth when I'm done with this stage. But you just have to wait and see what it looks like at the end of it everyone you just gotta have faith throughout this entire phase like there are stages of this where i was kind of doubting myself while recording it wasn't sure if i'd actually be able to pull off something looking good like the reference so that you guys would be able to learn from it improve i was pretty nervous i've never done a video like this before but it turned out pretty well um same thing with the eyes also they look very goofy until you add the shading and all the highlights but that's okay, you know, this is the part of the stage that you just throw on some music. You gotta get these little details in, and especially the shading, because the shading, once you're done with this stage, is gonna take you guys a lot longer, so be warned about that. So, I wish I didn't have to speed up so much of this video, but um, every part that I actually have sped up is at 1500%, which is 15 times the original speed, but you guys just do not have any clue how long this stuff takes if you're gonna take on a project like this you gotta know that it could end up taking up like a quarter of your day or something like that you have to be prepared but that's just what i'm here for all right so now we've made it to the longest stage which is shading and depending on how difficult your picture is this is probably gonna take you hours ladies and gentlemen i'm talking hours hours this particular painting took me about three hours, I'd say. There was about two hours of recording for just the shading. There's one right now that you're watching and then one after that, each of them about an hour long. So not that bad in the scheme of things, but if you're working a full-time job or something, it could be hard to squeeze in all the time for this. Because of how long these last two recordings are, I had to speed them both up to 2000% or 20 times the original. But I'm still going to be talking through it and telling you guys my general thought process while I'm doing it. So anytime you see me using one of these brushes that looks a lot more like an airbrush, make sure that you look in the top right of the palette and you see the softness and the brush shape that I'm using. The way that I'm able to achieve such a wide range of colors in the black and white spectrum is by just using very soft brushes. You can experiment with the color using as well, sometimes I use the black the dark gray or even the regular gray if i'm just trying to make a white part of the canvas darker on her face there's a whole lot of shading that i'm doing right now and some of it's a lot lighter and some of it's a lot darker so i just use those three colors mainly and then white to cancel out anything that i make too bright because you have to consider you can't really erase anything so it's all just balancing out like an actual paint canvas instead of digital art like photoshop um the reason that I did all the blocking is so that I can blend these into the face and make them look natural instead of more like cartoonish shadows or shapes and such. So you can see like under the lip right now it's looking a little pixely but I'll make sure and I go back to that to blend it in more softly and make it look more like a shadow than an actual lip would cast. Um, the highlights on these lips not looking too great. I'd give this painting maybe like a... 8.5 i've definitely done better but to be fair it's 8 a.m i've been up all night cut me some slack pal um other than that i think it's important that the eyes always look good in a painting the eyes really just sell everything you could have the dumbest looking nose and the dumbest looking lips on a face but if you get the actual eyeballs to be looking into the soul exactly how the reference image is then you can basically sell anything and a big important part of that is getting the highlights so those white dots in the eyes to be exactly where they are in the reference and then have all the other highlights and shadows just be perfect because i'm telling you man i mess up the eyes i probably end up rage quitting that's just how it goes um so when i'm using these big brushes to do shading sometimes they 
go over the lines and they get into the edge and again there's no racers so you just have to end up using white and go over the entire edge when i do the hair at the end the whole shading just goes crazy miles off the hair but i just roll with it um i erase it all at the end and then i throw in some extra hairs to add some more detail but like i said earlier hair not my strength so again cut me some slack sometimes if you're in a populated server um your painting can randomly exit out if someone flies over you or if there are people near you or anything like that so if you look at the palette if you press the button in the top right you can save the painting without actually exiting out of it and then obviously if you press update you can save everything too this is pretty important because if you're painting and then you end up using a brush way too hard which happens more often than you think because the brush shape also affects how hard or not a brush can be so you see me switching a lot between the first and the third brush shape I don't really use the hardest circle one or the square one. I use the square one to fill in the background because it's the biggest. But other than that, I just play with those two shapes and then the opacity to get all those shades that I aim for. Um, the face and the hair are just a really big balancing act between getting the white and the gray and a little bit of black. There is a lot more black in the hair than there is on the face. But you just want to get all those main colors down and then for the hair instead of doing it kind of like I do the face I did it more like um, layers I did a few layers of gray and then a darker gray adding in some white highlights and then some black over to make it stay realistic so if you guys actually made it this far I really appreciate it um, maybe I will be doing more videos like this in the future and uh, as soon as this time lapse finish I'll be showing a bigger side by side right next to the reference image so the two biggest tips I can give you are first of all when you're using brushes always use a softer brush than a harder brush so you make sure you don't press way too hard and ruin your whole progress and second of all don't think of this as overwhelming or way too hard for you just break up the painting into little pieces and make sure if you get the line work right all you have to do is shade each little segment perfectly and you should be great so as you can tell from the side by side, they don't even look that much alike. I don't want to hear these Russ Angelo comments or whatever. I mean like they could be cousins, but like they're definitely not twins. Like fraternal twins? I don't know. Well, I hope you guys learned something from this video and I hope you enjoyed watching me paint. Um, have a good one and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.